So by default, the macOS user interface looks something like this. It's pretty nice, but there's a lot that can be done to improve the user experience. So I'm gonna show you seven things to hopefully speed up your workflow as well as save some screen real estate. The first topic of conversation is the dock. For some reason, Apple decided to make the dock reside on the bottom of the screen. But the problem with that is applications tend to need more vertical screen space because there's plenty of horizontal space and a lot of our content is made to scroll. So this is really just in the way. If you go into your system settings and to dock, you can make it smaller and this works if you have a high resolution display. Problem is, if you make this window bigger, there's still all this wasted space for no good reason. So, what we can do is Apple does give you the option to automatically hide and show the dock, which is fine, but what I've always done is I put my dock on the left. This makes more sense to me. We read, well, English speaking people read left to right. And now we have more vertical screen real estate. Now, in addition to that, I mentioned you can auto hide the dock. This is something else I do, but there's a problem with the way Apple has implemented this feature. And that is that sometimes if you go to activate it, it, it just doesn't like it takes a while. You have to like really push your mouse to the side and it's finicky and it's just not a good experience. But luckily there is a way to fix that. Open terminal. And in the description of this video, there will be a few snippets of text and you'll copy and paste these in there and they will do certain things. And I'll show you what they do right now. And this first snippet of text is going to make it where the dock will always activate. You don't have to move your mouse around and have it sit there for a couple of seconds. Now, as soon as my mouse touches the last pixel on the side of the screen, the dock will activate, always. There's no delay. But for me, there's still like this animation that happens and that's kind of just wasting time. I don't really care for it. And you can disable this animation. So this next snippet of text will do exactly that. Now you just move your mouse over there. It appears when you move your mouse away, it disappears. Very quick, very simple. This isn't for everyone. It does lose a bit of that Mac OS fancy aesthetic. But to me, the dock is a utilitarian thing, and unless I'm using it, I'm not looking at it. So that's what I use. There's also a snippet of code to make the animation just faster than normal. I don't like that because, it, in my opinion, it only looks good on a high refresh rate display, and most people with Macs are not running those. But this has dramatically improved my user experience on macOS. Now the next tip has to do with the menu bar up here. There is the option in your system settings under general. You can also auto hide that. And on a desktop, this isn't exactly like, I don't see it as a necessary thing to do, but I've noticed that on laptops, particularly the 13 inch MacBooks, this makes a huge difference in the amount of screen real estate that you can have because now you have this entire screen and on MacBooks where uh, screen real estate is at a premium, that can make a big difference. It's also really nice if you just want to concentrate on a particular window. You don't have all these distracting things going on up here and you can just kind of focus on the task at hand. Now also in system settings, if you go to mission control, there's this thing called hot corners. And this 
is actually pretty incredible. You'll notice in my dock there is no app launcher shortcut icon. And that's because I've set up my mouse where if I just touch this corner, it opens the app launcher. And this, these are called hot corners. You can configure every corner of the screen to do a certain thing. So for me, instead of having to find that button on the dock or hit a button on the keyboard, I just swipe my mouse and then I have the app launcher. So under hot corners here, you can configure each one to do something. And if you hold down one of the modifier keys like command, you can make it where it only does the assigned thing if you're pressing command while you do the hot corner. If you don't want to like have accidental presses. If I were to hold down command and go to this corner, it would put the display to sleep. I don't want to do that because I'm recording, but that's an option. Now the next tip you're probably well aware of if you've used macOS for any amount of time, but macOS has something called Spotlight. And that is basically a system-wide search where you can find any file, any app, or you can do a web search if you want. But I use it as an application launcher. So like if I type in ACT enter, that's going to open Activity Monitor because that's like the first app on the list if you type ACT and I know that. Also, you can open any app. So like Photoshop and it'll open Photoshop. I don't want Photoshop right now. You can also search for files. So like if I, uh, if I search for test, it'll search for stuff in uh, applications. You can press show all in finder and it'll make it into a regular search. And Spotlight can do a ton of things. And you can Google like if you want the in-depth all the things it can do. Since this is a quick video, I'm not going to go into the depths of Spotlight, but just think about using it more, especially for applications that you don't launch all the time, but you like know the name and you know you need to use it at the moment. I use it for Activity Monitor all the time. It's good for like Terminal. It's a quick, easy way to launch stuff. And then the last tip is sort of an add-on to Spotlight. You may or may not know that you can have Siri on your desktop and you can actually tell Siri to do most of the stuff that Spotlight can do and some other things. So like if I want to launch Activity Monitor, I can tell it launch Activity Monitor and it'll do that. You can launch any app like that. Launch Photoshop. And I'm just holding down command and space, which is the spotlight shortcut. Instead of just pressing it, you hold it down. And you have to enable Siri. Usually, I think the Mac will ask you when you first set it up if you want to enable it. And, but if you don't have that enabled, it's just in settings. Another thing, which is pretty cool if you don't like talking to your computer, but you still want some of those features, is you can go into the accessibility settings and Siri and enable type to Siri. So now if you hold down the shortcut, you can actually type and you can just tell it to do things through text. So like search for images on my external hard drive and it'll do Siri stuff. You can just type and tell it to do things, which is pretty cool. So that is my seven tips to improve your user experience. It's especially useful for laptops, but I use it for all of my computers.